Hi hey guys, so um, I'm finally back with a new product. Uh, this time around again, I bought it off China, Taobao. So why? Because it's cheap and good and I uh, probably can find it for at least 70% of the original price that they sell in Singapore. So yeah, um, before I begin, I'm just gonna take you on a little history lesson about my journey with tripods. And if you don't want to, you can click here to skip to the actual product review itself. So, um, when I first started with uh, videography, the first thing that I bought was actually a tripod because pretty much anything you do requires either a tripod or something that stabilizes your shots. If not, you're gonna have to rely on your hands like pretty much the whole time which which, which is kind of strange because nobody can ever hold their cameras for like one hour straight right so looked on the internet on the forums look for people who were selling the stuff and the first thing I found uh, and I eventually bought it was this very heavy um, Lieback TH650 it's a very classic uh, meat spreader um, three section tripod which works as it's supposed to um, it's very heavy it's very stable i can set it up within what 15 seconds and it's there it works just like any other traditional tripod um, just turn the knob here and i can balance it there's a little spirit level that i can use to level my stuff so once it's set you can work it the best thing about video tripods as usual would be the fact that uh, instead of a photo version whereby it's a ball and you have to, you can put it at any awkward angles as per normal a video tripod head and you should be and you should know this by now if you are doing videos uh, video tripods allow you to lock different portions of it I can pan lock it in and then not be able to pan away or I can isolate one axis and operate the other so much so that even when I'm doing any movements or whatsoever I am remaining level so that's pretty much why we still need uh, tripods with this kind of heads um, I started using this for quite a while didn't exactly enjoy it because it's so damn heavy to bring around plus it isn't exactly the most stable tripod that I can get for this price I mean I got it cheap it's like second or third hand I got it for about 100 bucks so in a sense it's the steel but I mean if you look at it you can see all scratches and shit like that it's not again I, sp I, I, I emphasize it's not the most stable a few reasons the spreader is here uh, in the middle uh, they call it a mid spreader and if you look at the high end tripods they got a floor spreader which is able to do even more than just hold the tripod in place the, the spreader is there just to make sure that your tripod isn't going to go open all the way and spread ego uh, and eventually break your lenses this is there but the problem is and I should probably lift this up so you can see it the problem is this bit is a little bit on the flexible side it's not as sturdy as uh, we hope it should be so what it means that is that um, little minor movements actually cause it to shake a bit or go off axis as it's supposed to not do so that was a little bit of a headache to work with and eventually I gave up um, I gave up and decided to go with something else uh, that was when I looked into my photography roots because um, I first started out with photography so um, back then I had a tripod which I really like it's a photo tripod but like I said it was a bald head um, tripod so balancing the thing was a real headache I really didn't like um, using that for videography plus because it's a photo tripod you can't really do the pan and tilt and stuff like that smoothly and uh, still maintain the axis and keep it keep your audiences from vomiting so I decided to look up the internet and I realized that I mean Manfoto was doing it for quite a while already whereby they had one of those uh, photo tripod legs but with a bald head at the top so I decided to look around for alternatives I'm pretty sure that I mean if it's China it's, it's copycat central is bound to have a uh, tripod which is a copy of it and lo and behold I found um, this little beauty um, 
called the Benro S1573F. Um, what it is, is what it is. It is a, I wouldn't say it's a copycat idea. I mean, I, nothing is original nowadays, but essentially it's a photo tripod at the bottom. But at the top, you retain a little fluid head, but instead they've incorporated a little bald head uh, balancing mechanism over here that you can immediately access from the side. So this is something that's really nice. You extend the tripod and retract the legs as per normal, just like any other tripod. Spread it open this way, and then you have it. So basic operations, once you set up the tripod, just, unlo just loosen this knot, find your center, mm, spiritually and physically, and then tighten it. So from there on, it stays level throughout, and it works just like any other tripod, video tripod. So that's pretty much it. I will move on to some pros and cons that I really like, um, some detailed diff uh, versions of it. So the first thing I really like about this tripod is the fact that the instead of just pretty much uh, setting it to one level, you got this little mechanism over here whereby you can actually pull out and then what this does is that it actually allows you to maximize the angle whereby you can move. This will maximize the angle whereby you can actually uh, lower the tripod too and what this means is that it actually allows you to shoot from a really really low angle one that was previously not available to tripods of this price point uh, case in point this little useless mid spreader thing and again if you use a um, higher end tripod you will be able to do it because the floor spreader comes with a little knob whereby you can extend it a little bit more so that you can go lower or in fact floor spreaders are removable so if you're desperate for a low shot you can always remove the whole thing right so yeah uh, like I said given the price point this allows you to get even lower shots compared to traditional three section video tripods another thing I really like about the Another thing I really like about the photo tripod thingy, uh, should probably start calling this the S2. Another thing I really like about the S2 is the fact that over here, if you look over here, there's this little thing that you can twist, unlock, and then lift the camera up or down. This makes a lot of sense because uh, a lot of times on shoots, and especially on ones whereby you're so rushed and you don't have time to make any adjustments or whatsoever. This saves time because it's a lot easier to make micro adjustments to the height. Uh, previously what happens is if you're on set and you realize the shot is a little bit too low, you gotta unlock all three parts. One, two, three, lift out the camera, lock it back in again, and then it's ready. What you can do here instead, even though I might have a little bit might have it a little bit off uh, balance, is I can actually loosen this bit, lift it up, and then lock it in again. So essentially this can be done in three steps versus uh, one, two, three, lift, four, five, six, seven. Seven steps. So you're condensing seven steps into just three very make sensible uh, steps. And this saves time on set. Valuable time, man. Time means money, right? Yeah. So yeah. Um, I suppose I should talk about this balancing bit. Uh, another thing I really like about balancing is the fact that um, now uh, the way they incorporate this to work together. I mean, previously I've seen a lot of people who use photo tripods uh, regardless and uh, they can do it with the help of a little uh, add-on that they have to the base plate itself, uh, to the base itself and that is a little bit of like a, it's like a ball adapter that uh, works pretty much the same. Uh, so what Benro and Manfrotto did with their hybrid tripods is the fact that you now have a little knob over here that allows you to immediately access uh, 
the leveling portion of it and this saves a lot of time plus it's less awkward to handle again previously with uh, regular video tripods and even with the high-end ones if you want to level you gotta reach under the base itself and loosen this bit while looking at the spirit level once you're done you have to slowly move and tighten the shot so that you don't make any accidental uh, adjustments to it this i can just look here and my hands don't really leave the place too much i can still look at it and it's very intuitive makes it a lot lot easier again speed is of the essence time is money go for it it makes so much more sense enough of things i like about the tripod here's something i don't like and it is I mean, thankfully this is something that we can change and this is the fluid head itself. This is one thing that I don't really like. Um, reason being so, I'm, I mean I can't really fault Benro for this, I mean, um, this is an S2 model meaning that this is an entry level tripod. So what happens is the fact that while this is superb, the legs are superb, comes with an entry level head and this is not the best video head that you can go with in terms of actual work. That's it. If you're desperate for money and you need to buy something for the cheapest that works, this does its job. Um, I'll just go straight into why I don't really like this. Um, essentially, it comes to one little point. This entry-level tripod does not come with any uh, self-correcting mechanisms. If it goes here, it goes here, which means that if you're working with any other heavier tripods, there, there is always a chance that things might just go all the way to the front and it's very dangerous and in fact I've seen this happen quite a few times already so this is something that you have to be very careful about um, so what I suggest that we can do to fix this situation is actually a very simple thing so what you can do instead is and it's something that I intend to do I'm definitely gonna do is you can actually remove the head itself. Twist it out. Again, you do this, you do the same thing with any other tripod to be honest. Good. What you can do instead is replace it with a much bigger tripod. I've acquired this, oh, I've acquired this uh, S4 model. Blah. I've acquired this S4 model like a uh, long time ago. Um, when I was still using this little lie back tripod which because it was a slightly more decent model in fact this uses the standard Manfrotto plates that uh, the other tripods use it's much much bigger, much much more sturdier plus it has a bit of a self-correcting mechanism so what I, what I refer to the, in terms of the self-correcting mechanism is the fact that if I go beyond a certain uh, angle, it actually corrects itself. So this is very important, as little as it is, um, at least this prevents my uh, camera from flipping all the way to the front and then knocking itself on something, potentially damaging the equipment. Equipment is money, right? So you want to make sure that what you get is probably the safest. Unfortunately, as much as uh, they should be doing this, um, the site that I travel to, uh, I, I'm not sure if Benro does it directly, but the place I've been to does not offer the option of getting the legs with the S4 head together as a package. So that's something unfortunate. That said, you can easily buy this thing for much, much cheaper. So yeah. So right now, I'm just going to do a little demonstration of what I can do. And something I really like about the tripod itself is the fact that um, with the spreaders and all the functions itself. With the functions itself, I can quite easily and quite stably use a slider to work with the tripod and not worry about the fact that, oh, maybe if I'm going too low on the slider, the whole thing might topple. Because remember again, when I, when I previously mentioned that oh, um, this thing doesn't go low, not just low. Um, the problem with sliders operating like this on the tripod is the fact that you gotta worry about a lot of different things. Tripod sliders like this tend to topple the tripod a lot easily because of the fact that you are reaching beyond uh, what is the stable ground. Like this, it will cause the whole thing to topple over. But what happens is 
I can easily open this mechanism itself, spread it a little bit beyond the original height, uh, the original angle, and have it stay there. So the whole thing itself sticks, it stays quite stable. And in fact, when I'm turning over, the whole thing still stays where it is. It is quite stable. So this makes it a lot easier. In fact, I've actually used it on a few shoots a few times. So if I go all the way to the extreme bottom, uh, the extreme low angle that I can get on the slider and just moved it forward and backwards. And I didn't even have to extend the legs any extra. It's just one section of the legs, one section of the length. Put it on the lowest and it's still stable as hell. I probably needed to put, I think I remember putting a little bit of a weight on the front and just to make sure that it doesn't rock because the floor was a little bit uneven and that was pretty much just what I did. Everything else worked great. So in conclusion, like I've pretty much been preaching throughout the entire video, if you are on cheap and you want a good tripod and you don't mind the weight uh, to have it sent over from China, this Benro S2 tripod is probably the cheapest you can get and probably the most valuable one. In fact, I mean if Manfrotto is already adopting this kind of tripod, I don't see how you should be worrying about it. Again, I don't think, I mean if you can't really afford a good tripod, you probably won't be able to afford a damn good camera like one of those uh, 5 kilogram cameras or whatsoever it is. Uh, maybe when you're doing with dealing with that kind of equipment, then you, perhaps you should be looking at a slightly better uh, tripod, shouldn't you? So long story short, this cost me 644 yuan. If you do the calculations for yourself, that's pretty much quite cheap. On my end, 644 yuan with shipping and agent fees and all that stuff, I think I paid about close to uh, $150. I think so. It's quite cheap, it's quite worth it, considering the fact that if I buy it off uh, actual retail shops this might hit me 200 so I saved about 50 bucks just by waiting for two weeks it's quite worth it actually and now if it doesn't convince you enough so there you have it uh, this is pretty much my go-to tripod nowadays when I travel I bring it everywhere oh I forgot to cut one more thing so here's one more thing that pretty much needs to be covered because it's uh, something that you probably will be using a lot often uh, but not on a shoot itself. So let me bring it up to you and that is the travel bag that comes with it. This is a work of art. Okay, I'm exaggerating a bit but this is really great. I mean, it's quite well padded, prevents any hard knocks from the outside itself. I will do a close-up to show you everything else later. But yeah, it works really well. Closes just nice, snug and fit. Uh, has a hooking mechanism for the sling if, if you fancy using it. A uh, little shoulder pad that does nothing, unfortunately, except grip your skin and cause irritation. Uh, best thing about this is it actually comes with a little very soft foam padded handle that you can grab onto very well. My main grab with this, while it feels comfortable to hold, it's placed in the really weird uh, off-center position whereby if you hold it on its own, the tripod will tip to an angle and while it's nice most of the time, sometimes I actually feel compelled to hold it together with the strap so that I can actually make macro adjustments and have it level. To me, it feels that when it's level, it's much easier to bring to walk around, walk and hold on to. Yeah. But yeah, um, on the inside, there's even a little side compartment where can, you can put in your extra stuff and I'll just go through them one by one. First thing first, you have the instruction manual which nobody ever cares about, so I'm just going to throw it to the side. Then you have this little package over here which includes everything you need to make adjustments to the tripod itself. It comes with two allen keys to adjust maybe the tightness of it and shit like that. But more importantly, it comes with three screws. What happens here is that you can actually replace the rubber foots 
for steel spikes. And this is particularly useful if you're going to be on grass a lot because this punches in and there's no way the thing will move. And that's something very uh, something you have to really look out for, especially when you're on grass because grass is uneven floor. And uh, if you put it a little bit off, things might go wrong, it might topple and shit like that. So this is very useful, very nice. And it fits just nice if you don't want to take it out. It fits just nice into the pouch and that's really nice. <coughs> so there you have it. This is my review of the tripod. If it doesn't convince you enough to get one of these yourself, um, I suppose I should throw in one or two footages of myself working on it but all I can say is all you have to do is watch my other videos and they're pretty much all using this little tripod this little bad boy over here uh, I might have made some modifications in future videos but in the bare essential the, the legs are the most important so you can look at the stability of that to me this is a great travel tripod maybe not so much if you are using very heavy equipment but for a weight size like maybe the GH4 with a Samyang uh, Prime, this works very well. In fact, it balances just nice. The weight class is just nice. Everything is just nice. So yeah, um, Benro S2 tripod. Uh, available on Taobao if you're cheap or at your photo retail uh, companies that you can go to. It's pretty much everywhere actually. I mean... It's only a question of whether you want it cheap or if you want it legit. So that's your that's pretty much your choice. Do it. <laughs>